Hi, welcome Mr. Dyer's Musings. I'm Mr. Dyer and today we're going to be talking about hiking. And I guess I'm not dressed for it. Hold on. Now that's better. All right, so now that we're ready, I'm going to take you guys on a tour of what I take on a day hike. Stay tuned. As always, I like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I like to thank my students for always pushing me better in this situation. I like to push my scouts for um, you know pushing me to learn more and to practice what I already know and practice uh, some new stuff just so that I can teach them or at least be a better example for them. I like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Without you guys, then you know this channel would be a lot more difficult to maintain. So thank you so much. Please consider checking out on Patreon uh, and consider being a patron. I'd like to thank you, my viewers and my subscribers, because without you guys, also, what's the point of having the channel, right? So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm, I'm really excited about this because, you know, I, I like uh, display videos where you have guys that show off all their gear and everything and they review it and things like that. Um, I like, you know, checking out reenactors gear as well because, you know, everybody's kind of got their own twist on things. I think that's one of the really cool things about, um, outdoor enthusiasts because the only way for you to really dial in, uh, what you need and what you want to take is by practicing. So this is what I take on a short day hike. It's not a long day hike. It's not a camping hike or anything like that. In fact, this hike is even uh, going to be for more for an urban experience. The trail is going to be paved and prepared. Uh, we're not going out in the woods and things. Uh, I'm taking some arrow of lights, so that'd be fifth graders to those of you who are unacquainted, on this hike. And we're going to go on an eight mile hike total. So four miles in, four miles back. And it's in the middle of January, or I guess towards the end of January now. So, um, I'm not going to carry a ton of stuff on this hike. It's going to be somewhat bare essentials, but also some things that way when we go on the hike, um, gives me the opportunity to practice some things out in the field with these scouts um, that, you know, they can use later, you know, um, by themselves. So without further ado, let me show you what we're going to take. Oh. I'm glad you noticed. This is my um, M18, the 1898 Haversack that I transformed into my day bag, my knapsack. Now, actually, check this out. Isn't that cool? So, if you've seen my other Haversack videos, and I'm not going to reiterate it again, but check out my other Haversack videos because this has been kind of a journey for me, and I just found that picture last week. So I'm pretty giddy and excited about it. So this is my my haversack turned into knapsack. And in it, I've got everything that I need. Now I'm going to show you some things that honestly I carry on my person, but it's in my bag just in case I, I run and I forget it. You know, worst thing is, especially as a scout master, is getting out on a hike and finding out that eh, you're the one that's not prepared. So First things first, we have like the Scout Essentials, right? You have the Cub Scout Six Essentials and you have the Boy Scout Essentials. Now the Cub Scout Six Essentials is a whistle, sun protection, which includes hat, water, first aid kit, see, whistle, and, see, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. See, now I gotta do it again, all right. Water, first aid kit, whistle, sun protection, flashlight, snack. I always forget the snack, you know? It's funny, when we did um, our our pack, our troop, uh, what do they call it now? See, my, my mind's gone. It's been a long day of school and everything, and I'm recording this at like 9 o'clock at night. Uh, so usually in a troop situation, the week before you have an outing, you take your backpacks and everything and you, you dump it. So we can go through it and make sure everybody's prepared. That way when the camp out occurs, everybody got their stuff. And if something was missing, the scout could write it down and they could make sure that they bring it. And I can't believe I'm having a brain fart and I can't remember what that's called. And I 
no, probably towards the end of the video or right after I turn off this video, I'm going to remember. But at least you know what I'm talking about, okay? So anyhow, this past uh, troop meeting, you know, I got my bag. I'm laying it all out because we had a couple new scouts. I was going through it with them, and one thing I forgot was a snack. And my son, bless his soul, because that kid never forgets his snack, he called me out on it right in front of the whole troop. Boom, bam, done. Oh, well. But there's the new scout. He brought his bag, and he had everything, even a snack. And funny thing is, the kid doesn't even have his scout manual yet. So I was really impressed. I gave him kudos for it. So we do have our first aid kit. And I'm not going into the whole detail, but I am a scout master, a leader for the troop. This is, may not be everything that I would take on a longer backpacking trip just for myself, but um, this does have everything that you would need, especially mole skin, right, for blisters. It's especially kids, man, they, they don't come prepared. A lot of these kids aren't wearing the right shoes, right fitting shoes, or they just bought their boots and they haven't broken them in yet. So I do have my first aid kit. I do have I do have my whistle, my official Scoutmaster's whistle, and I actually have a whole collection of Scout whistles. I'll have to do another video of it. Um, but this is my Scoutmaster's whistle on the official old school Boy Scout lanyard. Pretty cool. I'll be wearing that. And you don't need my walk. I'll take a canteen, so I'm not going to show you that. This is all stuff that goes in my bag. Flashlight. <laughs> Trying to make sure I got the six essentials. Uh, and okay, so the things that I don't have in my bag yet are my, is my snack. I don't have a water bottle. I don't have my hat because I wear my hat, right? Um, so that should be it for the Cub Scout essentials. Now the Boy Scout essentials. You should also bring a knife. So I carry with me two knives. I carry my small, just basic pocket knife. And I also carry with me a belt knife, okay? Now some councils don't allow you to carry a sheath knife. Um, so if you're watching this and you're a scout leader, double check with your council. Some say you shouldn't, some say you should, but guide to say scouting doesn't limit you on that. So I always carry a belt knife with me, and I always carry my small pocket knife. You know, it gets a lot easier to have the right tool for the job. On longer hikes, I'll even take my hatchet, but I'm not going to take the hatchet with me. We're not planning on doing any woodwork um, on this hike, and like I said, it's a prepared trail, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's get into some finer details. Um, compass. Now, some people prefer the Linstatic compass. I prefer the card compass for working with scouts. It's simple because it has pretty much everything you need all in one. If you have a Linstatic compass, then you have to have um, uh, another card to go with it to use it on a topographical map. So that's why I have a card compass. I also have a Linstatic compass but for teaching kids. It's a lot easier with the card. I also am bringing water purification tablets. Funny story, at least I think it's kind of funny. Our very first troop hike, you know, just after our troop started, I take this, the scouts on their hike, and it's supposed to be, well, just a four mile hike, right? Four mile hike, not that big. I think it was in August, might've been June. But anyhow, it was in the summer, it was really hot. And I told everybody to bring two water bottles because it was gonna be hot, right? It was summer. Now this trail that we went on didn't have a whole lot of cover from trees. You know, there's a lot of open sun. And I guess I overestimated what the scouts' capabilities really were. And we got about a mile, maybe not even a mile. That's kind of sad. But everybody was out of water. We kept on taking breaks. It was just kind of a failure. It was a learning experience, right? So, um, Anyhow, that's the kind of fun, funny story about water. This trail that we're going on this time is colder, so 
they shouldn't be guzzling down water as much, but we still wanna make sure that they're hydrated. It's right next to a river and creek. So we have the water purification tablets. So if we get along the way and the scouts run out of water, they can take care of it. It's also a learning experience for them to treat water and learn how to do that. And you know, honestly, I think most of them are gonna be pretty excited about it. They will try creek water, okay? Purified creek water. Now to a kid, that sounds pretty exciting. Also have, because it's cold, hot hands. And I'll be bringing probably a package for each scout with me. But, um, nothing's worse than having a bunch of scouts on their first longer winter hike and they're freezing their butts off and they want to go home. So if you can make them a little bit more comfortable and make it a teaching moment, all the better. So maybe I'll hold off to see if, um, we'll see how, if they complain. If they complain, maybe then I'll take it out and give it to them instead of giving it to them right away. I think it's also really important to have a sewing kit. Nothing worse than being on a camp out or a hike and not and having an accident or tear or something and you don't have the right tools to fix that especially if you're pretty far away from pick up or drop off so i do take a sewing kit with me nothing fancy in fact this is an old 1930s 1940s sewing kit see i got a lot of artifacts i gotta do videos on bring you guys up to date so we'll be doing that i always take matches with me I think this was also one on the Boy Scout uh, needs list, just in case. You never know. And maybe, maybe on the trail we'll find some place and I'll give them opportunity to practice fire building. So there's that. I always take a small towel with me. Again, you never know. I'm taking a signal mirror with me. Not that I really expect to get lost or anything, especially with being a prepared trail. But this is one of those tools that I'm taking on with me so that we can teach the scouts and they can practice how to signal in a controlled, safe environment. Also take a coil of rope with me, take a notepad and a pen or pencil. Most important thing, in fact, you can tell, ask my patrol leader, my senior patrol leader, the first thing that I told them at the very first camp out is number one thing that they need to remember to bring with them every single time is an extra pair of socks an extra pair of socks okay and i've been urging them to try to get some wool socks for the winter or um, some smart wool for the summer and i try to urge the parents for christmas lists right maybe these are some things you want to think about giving your kids for christmas that way it's not a sticker shock when they go to their first camp house, especially as summer comes up. And would it be a troop outing without the good old fashioned Boy Scout manual? Just in case, again, there's a lot of teaching moments out there. You may want to take binoculars with you. Now, not necessarily I take binoculars with me at every hike, but this is kind of special. So I'm trying to look for opportunities to see where the kids' minds will go when we get out there. Uh, in fact, I'm even taking a very small songbook with me. So if the kids get too tired, they're starting to get you know, grumpy or whatever, try to lift up their spirit because scout spirit is pretty important in the program. And something that I don't carry in my pack, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you so we can talk about it, is I, I got a sweater. Now on scouting, on cold weather campouts, it's really important to wear layers. So I'm going to wear all my different layers, a t-shirt, long sleeve shirt, sweater, my coat. And then you know, if it gets warm or whatever, I can shed them off and I can put them in my day bag. And that's it. Now, going back to a sewing kit really quick. A sewing kit doesn't have to be very fancy. Same thing with like a first aid kit. You know, a first aid kit could literally just be um, a sandwich bag with a couple band-aids and some ointments in it and you're good to go. A sewing kit, you know, doesn't have to be very professional. This is an, an old CAPS 10 and it's got some extra buttons. It's got a, pure, a piece of beeswax, it has a thimble, um, it has a spool of different threads and safety pins. And I got my regular needles on a piece of leather. Oh, it doesn't have to be 
super fancy. That's the cool thing about bushcraft and kit and scouting and stuff like that. Um, you you kind of adapt, okay? You learn to adapt. And I think that's really important instead of going the whole commercial route all the time. Oh, and something else that I didn't grab. See, good thing I made this video. Is I always take with me a trash bag. And I tell my scouts, you know, get rain gear. Now, if you don't have rain gear, you know, get a trash bag. And honestly, on hikes, it just seems to make more sense to me to take a trash bag. So if you need it, you can cut a hole in it or whatever, and you got yourself your poncho. It's so light in comparison to your traditional, like, frog togs or other rain gear, commercial rain gear. Okay, so I always take a trash bag with me. And I take a couple... Um, Ziploc sandwich bags too. So just in case, you never know. Now the last thing I want to talk about for hiking goes back to the oh, oh manual, haha, -ha. the handbook for patrol leaders. Now these old books are awesome. They are just so good. They're just full of information, things that have kind of been lost, I think, in general. Now in scouting, they tell you that um, you should always try to break up work. You know, you should always sign different jobs for scouts to do so that they can kind of specialize it. And I've been really working on going back to the roots of scouting, especially with my troop. And in here, it talks about some of the responsibilities. So, let's take a look here. Each scout should have a job in a patrol. Now, your average patrol has about eight boys, according to Green Bar Bill in this, uh, in this text. And I think that's... You know, that's pretty much been a standard, even when I was a scout. You had that. Now, here, it has a list of various jobs. And I tasked my patrol leader with assigning each scout in the troop, or in the patrol, rather, a job. And he did. And it's helped things out quite a bit. So you have your patrol leader, you have your assistant patrol leader, you have a treasurer, you have a scribe, you have a quartermaster, and these last three have been significantly helpful to my troop. And it's taken a big burden off of the patrol leader and the patrol as a whole because everybody kind of has their job in these three um, so that they're specialists. Now, that's not saying that they're the go-to and they make all the decisions. No, you still make it as a you know, democratic patrol. But these three are specialists in their fields. You have a hike master. And the hike master, generally speaking, has a, a list of various hikes, of various areas that you can go to hike, maybe permissions on people's land that the, the patrol can go on to hike, and it also catalogs the distances of the trail. So if you need a four-mile trail, all right, we're going to, let's see, which of these trails have a four-mile trail? How about a 10-mile, et cetera, okay? So your hike master has a list, trails, ideas, maybe camping ideas too, okay? The grub master, he, he has an idea of what foods the scouts in the patrol like to eat, what they like to cook, and roughly how much the budget will go towards that. So I suggest getting a grub master. And my son, who's kind of a goofball, he's the class clown, a cheer master. Okay? Now, cheer master is the person who's responsible for having some song ideas in their head, maybe some skits for a camp out, maybe, um, maybe games too. So the patrol leader, before all this, he was the one that was kind of tasked with coming up with games every week, you know, along with all of his patrol ideas they had to do for patrol meetings. Well, the cheer master's job every week was to come up with a game and organize the game. Okay. Now he would bring that up to the patrol leader, and the patrol leader would, you know, generally give it an okay or not okay. Some games, if he knows, maybe the cheermaster notices that the kids are getting tired of a particular game, he will give them a couple of different ideas. So then that democratic process of patrol still happens, 
Again, he's not an authoritarian dictator, but they have knowledge and a list of ideas ready to go on the fly. There's nothing like a camp out or a meeting where something goes wrong or something goes stale and you're just grasping at straws. Having someone specialize in that area is really handy, especially on camp outs and um, hikes that are going to last longer than your traditional troop meeting. You know, so if you don't, if you get a chance, this book right here, I read it from forward front cover to back. It's awesome. And in fact, it's got um, plans on how to make equipment in the back because scouts in the 1920s were actually encouraged to make their own equipment. Can you imagine that today? If troops encourage that scouts to make their own equipment instead of just, again, material culture that we live in, just going out and buying it. Sure, it's easier, but with scouts making their own equipment, they're learning how to sew, they're, they're learning how to improvise, they're learning um, mathematics, they're learning how much money that they need to save up or make uh, to buy the material for those items. And all, honestly, honestly, here's the kicker. They appreciate it more. They treat it better because they made it. Okay, so I kind of got preachy there at the end, but sorry about that. But I hope that my day hike loadout was kind of interesting to you and appealed to you, if nothing else may. I hope you uh, liked seeing some of the cool artifacts that's coming your way with future videos. Please consider liking this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have any questions questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, I've been getting a lot more participation on my channel with getting uh, you guys to interact with me. and I appreciate it. I love it. I love it. In fact, um, a couple of you have even shared some of the things that you know, and uh, I get giddy about it, man. I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. I hope to see you on the trail someday. All right. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones. Without further ado, Take care. Have a good night.